So we're doing the uh, hack night this evening here with uh, basically encouraging people to uh, try out programming if they are not familiar with it. And if they are familiar with it, maybe try out a language you're not familiar with. Uh, so with the two teams here, Python and uh, Swift. Yay! <laughs> um, uh, one thing that we were talking about here was making a quick pitch to the audience. Uh, between the two languages, uh, why you should consider, uh, say, my team, the better team versus his team. Um, uh, so representing uh, Python, uh, I'll, I'll go on first, you know, start, start on the best foot we'll forward. Go and, alphabetically. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> which, <laughs> which song, name? <laughs> uh, so uh, for a team Python, uh, um, my pitch to you, if you have never uh, tried out the Python language, uh, it is an amazingly flexible language to be uh, versatile with on the Mac. Uh, one of the things that really initially attracted me to the Python language uh, when I first started with it on Mac is the fact that it ships functionally right out of the box on your Mac. It's at user bin Python. Well, that's one way to run it. Uh, and it has extra capabilities beyond standard Python due to a choice that Apple made, which is that they not only ship Python standard with all the Macs, they also have shipped since, I think, 10.4. They ship a third-party module called PyObjective-C. PyObjective-C lets you take the Python language and multiply its power times 10 or 100 or 1,000, whatever you want to consider it, on the Mac because uh, what the Python language isn't able to do with uh, stock python.org uh, programming modules, the PyObjective-C module lets you take the power of the Apple API and patch it in and use that directly as well. It's kind of like a peanut butter and jelly situation. Uh, you get uh, sort of two great things together. Uh, I'm sure he's going to make a pitch over here to Swift, just there's a Swift API, but, but uh, <coughs> uh, you're walking right into that one. Yeah, I know. I, so I figured I'd just step that trap off before you get a chance to. Um, but uh, the, the, the Python language is extremely beginner friendly. Um, it, you can work on it with any text editor that you want and just chmod plus x a file and suddenly you have an executable that runs. You don't need to, for instance, install Xcode or the command line tools in order to actually do anything with it on your Mac. It just actually works. Um, <laughs> that means that if you're a computer administrator like so many of us are here, you can uh, ship a Python script without anything else to your Macs and they have the capability of running it immediately. You don't have to ship compiled binaries to all your devices that, oops, I didn't link it with the right SDK or something along those lines. Also makes it really easy to share with other people your code because your code that you're reading on GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket or whatever is that's the thing, like you can copy it to a text file and immediately run it. You don't have to go through compilation or anything along those lines. Uh, makes for collaboration very easy. Um, makes for, uh, if you're uh, working with a team of people writing in Python code, uh, you're not like, okay, I have, compared to compiled languages, for instance, uh, you're not like, I have the output, does anybody have the source code still for this thing that we made like a year or two ago? Because in Python, it's one and the same thing. Um, uh, additionally, um, uh, there are, uh, Python is available uh, on other platforms as well, Mac, Linux, uh, I have it on my iPhone, there's a Pythonista app. I write Python code on my iPhone, I was showing that off at lunch today, do all sorts of crazy things with it, uh, really cool. And um, uh, just, heck, I ran it on my uh, 3DS. Uh, so uh, it, I, if you haven't it, uh, tried it out, I really recommend it as a uh, language, uh, very flexible and uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Thank you. I'll now hit my cue. Um, everything that he said and 10 times more. Um, I have not run Swift on my 3DS. I will admit, I'm okay with that. Um, yes, you have to download Xcode, but 
it's free, you do it once, you move on. Um, I can sign all my binaries. Python's already signed. <laughs> Not when you write it in a text file. <laughs> yeah, so I don't care about the binary, uh, the, the Python library being signed. It's the script, the object that I'm working with that I'm more interested in. Um, I can have all of the wondrous APIs. That's not entirely true. Apple's still not converted over everything to Swift. But I have at least as many APIs as PyObjective-C does. Including the private frameworks and stuff that I hook into? Sure. <laughs> I can do that just as easily as, as PyObjective-C can. You've got to do the external stuff and everything else. But, so you can get to that. It's just not incredibly easy. Um, but I've got the full API and I have a full UI. Yeah, except I don't have to do a whole lot of extra work for it. I get the fancy new stuff. I can get all the UI and the other bits and that. Um, so as you can see, we're having a little fun with this. Uh, what we've kind of, what we hadn't gotten to is, is what do we do tonight? Um, <laughs> I mean, we could sit here and, and pretend to really be angry at each other, but um, I don't know that it'll work that well. So there's a couple of thoughts we had for tonight. Obviously, we're very interested in having people come out and kind of just explore and experience Python and then Swift and then whatever languages other people want to work with. Um, one of the thoughts we had was if we want to look at something that's just come out in Mac OS High C. Um, I, every time I hear High Sierra, it just stops at High C. Um, so I'd, we'd love to maybe do something around that. One of the first thoughts was, well, let's have competing projects. Well, there's not enough dev hours in the Mac world to waste against just trying to figure out which language is better, because we're not going to win anyway. And somebody's going to come in with Objective-C or Go or something else and then complain about that. So we didn't think it was very valid to try and write the same thing in Swift and in Python at the same time. I mean, it would be easy for Swift to win, so I'd feel bad <laughs> for, Wait a for Team Python. And then, so. Yeah, but what version is Swift? That all the time. Oh, no, but they always go up. Hey, hey, hey. What? What, what, what version of Python ships on the OS? You got 2.7. Yeah, and what do you code in? 2.7. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's not quite as run anywhere as you're suggesting. But anywho, anywho. So then our other thought was, is there something, is there a tool, is there something out there that somebody would like built in a night? Keep that in mind, like built in a night. We've got a lot of horsepower here. In, in one room, uh, where we could maybe do something with Python for the stuff that Python's best at, which is the things nobody wants to look at and is way under the covers, <laughs> all right? And then we could have beautiful Swift uh, for an interface, and maybe it could be fun kind of sketching out an API uh, between something in Python where we'd all have to agree before we started drinking too heavily uh, what that API is, and then each team would go off and the Python folks would do something that would then vend an API to a Swift interface that would then display the API. So that was a thought. I'm not getting much feedback yet. All right, because we can keep going if this isn't interesting. Alternatively. Alternatively. Oh, Rich, Rich has a question. Well, no, I have an idea. Oh, no statements, please. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. You have our attention. <laughs> I want a tool. Sorry, I'm going back to statements at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, or his statement question, question, can we put those together? Request, how about a tool that builds profiles? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, Owen does. Um, so the, the item on the table would be a UI to allow you to generate configuration profiles by entering in arbitrary keys and anything else you want. It would then wrap it in the plist structure and then write it out 
to an appropriate format with dot mobile config at the end. Uh, sure. I mean, frankly, what he's asking is, is pretty easy already because uh, that's not that hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> there is a little bit of that. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that that would be easy. So that's cool. So one idea. Any any other ideas in the back with Matt? So that was a thought for. Yeah, we actually talked about that one a little bit. <laughs> yeah, um, that was actually the one thing that we kicked around before this. So we have done a little bit of prep. If it doesn't show, I just want to let you know we. We're not entirely improv everything here. Um, we did have the thought that with high c maybe we'd want to do something around APFS. I haven't looked at the new tools. Um, Sam, I know a few other people are. Yeah, see, Sam, now I, I name-checked you, so you popped your head up. Um, <laughs> Victor? How about a custom MDM agent that uh, knows how to configure APFS? Ooh. Ooh. Now we're getting somewhere. So Victor's asking for a custom MDM agent that would receive keys via MDM, perhaps a tool that we write for Rich first, just to get warmed up, that would generate configuration profiles, which would then be installed on your favorite MDM solution or micro MDM. That didn't come out right, because that sounds like micro isn't your favorite. Uh, anyway, uh, that would be installed on an MDM server, and then that MDM profile would get pushed down and there'd be something, we're not sure what yet, would be on the local system that would interact with that and potentially commands would be format disk. <laughs> what, could what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh, this could be interesting. All right. Um, what uh, is that? Is that interesting? So far, we're combining everything. We've got APFS. We've got profiles. We've got an agent. Another one in the back. With two-factor security. Come on, bring it. Bring it. I've already got that code. That's easy. <laughs> This is exciting. So the problem statement is we are looking for a workflow now. It's not even just a single tool. It's a workflow that would have a starting point of a UI that would allow you to generate generic configuration profiles, sign them with the express purpose of actually being used for this tool, but that'd be fine. So you can create configuration profiles, sign them, install them in an MDM solution, have the MDM solution push that configuration to an agent on the local machine that would then revert an OS back to a previous snapshot. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. Forget imaging. <laughs> discussion I had earlier regarding the, the death of the gods in my talk with uh, uh, the thick versus uh, thin imaging. If snapshot rollback actually works, that is a somewhat valid replacement for vanilla imaging because you can go back to a clean Mac with an OS installed on it. It might be slightly out of date, but you can take that to install whatever available updates are available for the machine. But you definitely would have instant rollback to OS is installed on the machine, which would actually be really, really cool. <clears throat> oh, I, I like this. Do we have something? <laughs> yeah? Show by applause. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, so the challenge was, and I should have made slides on this, but... Uh, not too late. No, it's not. <laughs> hey, Siri. Um, can we do something with APFS where you could push commands via MDM to an agent running on a high C machine that would then take snapshots and roll back snapshots? So that was the original premise. We then digressed into uh, partisan fighting for a little while, um, name calling, finger pointing. Uh, we then pulled back up uh, once the Python folks realized uh, their position was weak. Um, <laughs> We, we then got into the concept of, well, we should really have a whole taxonomy of MDM commands, because why stop with just APFS snapshots? That seems like, uh, you know, uh, taking it easy. 
So I said, all right, well, uh, but we got to divide this up into two pieces. So we ended up with a UI piece that was in Swift to open up configuration profiles. This is what Rich had kind of wanted for. Uh, be able to unsign them, break them apart, edit them, sign them, and send them back down. Those would then get pushed up to an MDM server. The MDM server would then push the keys, and then the Python side would run the agent that would then manipulate the APFS snapshots uh, and go from there. First roadblock, APFS snapshots were removed. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wink, 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 wink. Oh, yeah, so it, well, it, the functionality is still there, but the, the, so it's APFS underscore snapshot is in the 1012. It's currently in Tierra public right now. Um, but there's a big warning every time you try and run it, and it says, warning, this could be removed in a future re revision. And they followed through on the warning. Sure and the command is gone now. Um, the ability to revert to a particular snapshot is still under the apfs.util command. Um, it, we just couldn't create the snapshot. So if you can't create one in the first place, how can you even test that the reversion command works? And so uh, there was actually a really nice blog post article from one of the Dtrace guys uh, who didn't even know that command existed and went through and found the API behind the scenes and wrote his own third-party tool for doing snapshots. And then after a Google search, found out that the command actually just was already in the OS. And so um, we know the APIs that make snapshots. It looks like we might be able to make a tool for it. There might be the possibility that Apple has gated it behind a, uh, a, um, a uh, what do they call it, with the signing? Um, Entitlement. Entitlement. Thank you. Uh, so uh, if that's the case, uh, that sucks because, uh, but uh, as a side note, we did use the 1012 command line tool on 1013, and that did work. Which uh, I would kind of <laughs> consider cheating because I don't think it was written in Python. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> 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 Uh, but uh, yeah, so that ended up detracting a lot. <laughs> so, so do you have something to show? Uh, th th about the only thing I've got to show right now is I have a daemon, a daemon that can respond to a preferences domain and just like print something to the screen mm. and say, uh, uh, I saw Should preference I show change. what we have? Yeah, I, okay. I saw what you wrote and it looks impressive. So please, <laughs> by all means. So this was actually kind of fun. There's about nine things I've never done before um, until this came around. So real quick, if we just hop onto my desktop, I've got a whole collection of stuff, but there are some signed profiles and some unsigned profiles on here. All right, so this is a little app. Um, we, we got, oh geez, we registered a domain, right? Yeah, well, uh, I took a picture of it, but I couldn't read your handwriting, so I came up with a different one. Okay, probably. so um, I think we have a domain called a Dossy, but then I think I changed it last night. Yeah, the screenshot um, showed like org.macdevops. and then it went blah, 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 and I couldn't read the last part. So, so. this is the app. Let me um, hide out this part, and then you can see this a little bit easier. So it's a little document-based app, which I've never done before, which is kind of fun. And if I go up here, let me uh, cancel out of that and actually close this. And if I go up here and I can open recent, for example, I can open up a config profile, oh, make did this you find larger. A made viewer for the, the thing? God no. Oh, you made one. Yes. That is impressive. This was a royal pain in the behind. Um, so now you can actually go through this whole outline view, and you can get to your exact preference keys that you want. Scroll through them. If you have a signed profile, it'll unsign it on the way in. If you don't have a signed profile, it doesn't care. It just opens it up. And we'll work on the UI a little bit, but if you come up here, you can actually see what the structured XML looks like in addition to this down here. All right, and currently you can go in and you can actually edit this. We don't have little pop-ups based upon type, but that would be really nice if we did that, right? And then you, you'd be less able to completely mess yourself up. <laughs> Because uh, I don't do any validation, right? So this is your profile, and if you go up here, you can pick a cert. This was something I didn't even know I could do, because this is Objective C and it's not supposed to work. Uh, but <laughs> you can pick your signing cert that you want, and then what we don't have yet is a save button. So uh, it's it's very safe, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've got the function to do the signing already done. I just need to reload all of this crap out of the view and pack it into XML and then sign it. So that's just a little ways away. 
And then uh, if you hold down the control key, uh, you have a, a bird taking out a snake. Ow! Oh! Oh! Uh. Thank you. Thank you. So, so far, very good fun. And actually, I think this is relatively useful, right? Yeah. <laughs> As I was doing this last night, I was a little like, hey, uh, this could come in handy. Um, I know there's been some people that have done like the droplets for de-signing, which have been really nice, and some other things, because otherwise you can get really frustrated with these config profiles. No, no dead serious. If you, it, as, as a tool in and of itself, the ability to open up and make a signed profile will take a, 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 lot of, a lot of people immediately adopt it in the Mac app. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about UI, which is why all these little things are off. Um, Looks but. as good as Xcode, so I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, a little bit more work in loading all this back in after you've made any edits to it, and then signing it and saving it down. We already have, like I said, the signing is already, that's easy, just a CMS operation. Um, I just got to iterate through every cell in this table and then generate XML for it, which is not an enjoyable experience. Ooh, ooh uh, feature suggestion request uh -oh. number one. Uh, uh, full request. Full request. Entertained, entertained. But maybe not accepted. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, 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 well, I was uh, hoping they would have had something. Uh, uh, but oh, 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 oh. Uh, so on the GUIDs part, for the identifiers, mm -hmm. for the uh, payloads and whatnot, uh, a little pop-up, can you generate me a random GUID? That would be nice, uh, yeah. That would be very nice. If it knew it was a GUID, it yep. could just put it up there. Yep, yep. I mean, it would be really cool to have knowledge of individual payloads as well. Yeah. So that if you were like a template, if you were creating a payload around something, you could click. If you, uh, yeah. So quick shout out to uh, Mosin's uh, GitHub uh, project. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Who's explored uh, all that? He, he, he actually, if you guys haven't seen it, can you bring up? Um, oh, darn it. What's the Thank URL you. for that? I was just like literally Google search like Mosin profile. Or Mosin something. profiles. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. Uh, um, top 25 Mosin profiles on LinkedIn. No, no, no. Um, top 25 Mosin profiles in. What search engine is this? <laughs> Do you not block out all the ads? You horrible. I don't know what this is. All right. Anyways, um, we'll, we'll we'll post it up in the Mac admin Slack for for uh, uh, Mac DevOps. Um, he has gone and Here done uh, uh, amazing work. This no, no, no. Uh, actually, view the site though. So go to um, mosin.github.io/profile-docs. Um, now that I know what the name mosin is. Mosin.github.io. There it is. I've already got it. Wah, wah. Slash profile docs. Mm, slash uh, there we go. Profile plug in the main. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. So, the cool, so this compared to Apple's reference <laughs> for mobile configuration profiles is amazing. If you've never been to this site, highly recommend it. And on a lot of the stuff, so if you go to like the, um, uh, there should be one for like the Skep profile. Um, uh, well, I don't know which section you're in right now. Uh, your profile domain plugins. Here you go. Uh, yeah, do like AD certificate, for instance. There you go, AD certificate. So y you should see on here, uh, right at the top, template. Ooh. He actually has this in his Ooh. thing already. You can get example mobile config profiles for almost every profile type. You just click it and you get a download copy of like a pre-built one that you can then go in and change your settings for it. Which I can so then go in you here. You can hook it into the app well, here, and just pull the template out of here. I can open. And if I go to download, um, there it is. AD managed certificate. Yeah, man. And here is your seven items in the Serious. default. Serious? Like he he's done a lot of the work already oh, yeah. for all this oh, stuff. Oh yeah. So uh, and yeah. If you expand these all out, I'm really excited. <laughs> oh hot damn! Well, this could be cool. This is feature request number two. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because that's just a pull down menu of all the ones that he has up there. Yeah. yeah. Now he needs to generate an API so I can, but never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Should I could, be yeah. Able to access, read the docs. Yeah, so I should be able to build it off that. But then I have to do web things. That's for the Python yeah. team. Yeah. For the blue team. <laughs> or go team. Go team. Well, actually, this is pretty cool because then you'd be able to go in here, you'd be able to edit these mm -hmm. where he's got example. And if and we're just put your stuff in. really good, we'd highlight the ones that say example in red or something because yeah. you'd then know what you needed to edit yeah. and go from there. So, uh, interesting? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Not bad for like 12 beers. Um,
Yeah, cool. Uh, cool. On, on a score scale, I'll definitely give a point to Team Swift on this. <laughs> one, one to zero! <laughs> We're 100% better. Or infinite. Uh oh. Oh, Why Alistair. Keep each other's more? So, uh, in the you need a, vein of a Wade Robson and uh, Jeremy Agost uh, doing Hancock, I was the manager and uh, <laughs> uh, Victor did all the coding. <laughs> So we have Simeon uh, import as another hackathon late entry that required no beers because uh, it also only took 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's, it's still because therefore we, we decided, you know what, I'm thirsty, let's go actually drink some beers. Um, so the only thing that uh, we have to show for it right now is- A web page. Uh, Working code and releases. Oh, see, but they've got it up on. They've got the commit up. I think it's yeah. definitely. Oh, I have a commit. Yeah. Oh, the, what, GitLab. Yeah. That doesn't count. So the there's a bit, there's, <laughs> while, while those guys discuss uh, how I'm going to be graded, um, <laughs> it was originally shove p list. But what it is is um, Simeon does not have programmatic interaction hey, with the Blob store. Hey, twenty hours ago was before the hack night started. Yeah. <laughs> Was it? I think that might have just been the repo. Was video. that like 6 p.m.? Is that accurate? Oh, that was at the very, well, we weren't. Sorry, it took yeah, us 40 right. minutes, bro. That, 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 okay, okay. okay. So, All right. Uh, so, so what it does is you download, that, you download that release. You uh, provide it with a name and a, uh, a file path of what you want in Simeon. Uh, and then you get to have in your uh, Simeon instance that package info file. Um, if you have a cloud-fronted S3 bucket, as I'm going to uh, use it for, uh, and you have uploaded that out of band with auto package code that has yet to be written, which I can actually do, um, <laughs> you can then make a pipeline that, uh, as it comes down and uh, the monkey recipe generates the package info file, uh, you can feed it to this binary that then shoves it into your instance. And the auth is all handled by the G Cloud, uh, the Google Cloud SDK, uh, which I have the link for right there. Uh, and I mentioned that it was a hackathon project at MacTOS 27. Publish or perish, bro. Publish or perish. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that is uh, what uh, Victor was able to bring into the world. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you kindly.